I'm wrong. I'm all wrong. Okay, so we have to I we have to start over, and I get I, a new guess because now I understand what I you mean. I won. Not understanding the rules, you lost. All the crankshaft bearings were lower spec, and if we are now also lower spec on all the cornrod bearings, this is going to be a 5W30 dumbass engine. Oh my God. In a previous episode, you saw that we had only one damaged connecting rod and you saw the debacle with the replacement we ordered from Britpart. Now we still have one more connecting rod to, to inspect and that's what we're gonna do right now. And here in working direction, you can see it's exactly zero. There's basically no wear in those connecting rods. We can reuse them. Because that's what we're going to do anyway. I put some lubrication on with Vera's toothbrush here. I got a picture of the engine block. This way I can put the connecting rod in in the right orientation. And there is a little arrow. That arrow got to point forward, okay? You got to watch the shoulder, you know? So now I can pull the pin in, yeah? I have the pistons marked down here with a punch that this was piston number one. I got to put that clip in, which is really a pain. Yeah, thank God we only have to do one clip. The other one is still installed. Half an hour later and after watching our own video. Okay. <laughs> it's not so easy, but now I know how to do it. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to clean the piston board with ATF. Okay. I saw a YouTube video where the guy did this because ATF shows you very nicely if there is any debris left in the bore. If you pull your rag out and it's only red, you can be sure it's clean. A really nice viewer out of Germany, Martin, sent us a unlimited supply of shop paper towels. You're so okay thank you, that? Martin. Well, no, that's dirty. Okay, he also sent us an unlimited supply of white sharp towels. And if you have discussions with your wife, if it's now clean or not clean, better use white <laughs> towels, okay? One <laughs> yeah. more wipe here. And now it should only be red. And what I had to do over the last couple of weeks is spray WD-40 regularly into those bores so that they didn't corrode. You gotta protect those bores. They can rust overnight. So what is that? That's clean. Done cleaning now. <laughs> now we're gonna install the bearing into the connecting rod. And the way we do that is also with a very light coat of ATF on here. And I got these previously cleaned with Emery cloths. And here I got my bearings labeled U for upper. It's the upper bearing. And they have a, a coating on the back. So we'll take that off here real quick with Emery cloths. You don't want to touch the other side. Now the bearing is all clean. And I'm going to orient the riding to the riding on the connecting rod, just so that I have a direction in case something goes wrong and I have to take them back out. This one is now ready to go in. I'm gonna give it a really light oil here. We are installing the original pistons and the original piston rings, okay? We walked you through this in our last video where we talked about infant mortality rate. And you can read yourself through the comments to see if I'm right or wrong. Put the piston in here. That's the yeah. best way to get oil onto that piston. Crankshaft pin is turned away from the piston. Here we got a few how the piston rings have to be aligned, okay? Oil control ring gap goes towards the center of the engine. Here is my gap of the oil control ring. Then the upper ring goes forward and the lower ring goes into this direction. That's about the stupidest tool you can use for this job. I put this over it like this. Now I lift the piston up a little bit. Now I ask Vera to give me this tool over there. Then I tighten this up. If I have to do any cursing, I cut that out of the video, of course. Because the risky part is that you can snap the oil control ring with this method. That I see my Chinese cheap tool. I gotta watch out that I'm not hitting with the crankshaft very carefully. And you see it went in all smooth. There was Perfect. no clonking noise from snapping the oil control <laughs> ring. Now I can turn the engine over. And there it is. it is. Yeah. And now we're gonna do a plastic gauge check. Okay, I got enough paper, that's for sure. It's in the working direction of the piston, okay? It's marked L with lower. I Give removed the clean. coating on the outside. Now, the cap is also wiped with the emery glass. So, Emery glass. So, I orient the riding on the bearing 
towards the writing on the Conrad to make it sound like I'm a German perfectionist. We are on the lower, but the engine is upside down. That screws me up. Okay? Yeah, I don't even know where left and right is. I think that's why Australians are better engine assemblers because, you know, for them it's always upside down. I set it here on top. Now I'm using used bolts. I don't want to use my new bolts. Okay. Tighten these with 20 newton meters. 90 degree on the rebuild. I can open it back up. So, and now, do you know what it has to be? Crankshaft Conrad running clearance 0 0.047 to 0 0.076. Everything is oily and everything slips. <laughs> there it is. Looks good. Um, I threw that away. You threw that away or you... Oh my God. <laughs> Why did you throw that? I would say 0 0.05 fits really good, doesn't it, guys? Yeah. 0 0.047. Okay. And we are at 0.05. That's the lower end, 0.047. So all the crankshaft bearings were lower spec. And if we are now also lower spec on all the Conrad bearings, this is going to be a 5W30 dumbass engine. Oh my God. Did you? No, don't. Take a picture. Of yes. It. So we can show them later. Got it. <laughs> Why are there two bolts sitting here? Oh, oh, those are the ones I took out. Okay. Oh my God. And now the difference to before is... We'll use new bolts. So two new bolts. So piston one of six installed. How is that? Perfect. Nicely. That feels yeah. so nice. So I'm nice. hungry. Okay. So I'm not even allowed to go to the mailbox and see if I got something. Oh, well, maybe I'm not demonstrating this, how good I am. <laughs> You're on your own. <laughs> Okay. Look at that. Number four is the aftermarket Brit part. How it doesn't bend all the way back. It doesn't have that range of motion. Only that far. The only reason we saw this now is because I set them next to each other like this. Yeah, so let me take it back out and we investigate it. Oh, I want to be done. The brand new Rover blood. Our Land Rover magazine from the German Land Rover Club. And it says here historical Land Rovers and they show a Freelander. It's not that historical, especially that one. This one on the OEM is 14.7. And when I measure this one, it's 15.4. So they screwed up this cut going down this way. Same on the other side. We got to take off about 0 0.25 millimeters on either side. And we want to just set that angle and go exactly parallel to each surface, 0 0.25 on either side. So How is that somebody going to do who doesn't have a milling machine? Now this is going to remove weight on this side of the Conrad. So I calculated out how much weight we're going to remove. I calculated basically the outer surface, the inner surface, subtracted it. Yeah. So I get the ring, then I multiplied it with the thickness of 0 0.25 and then the density of the material. And I get 1.4 grams, which we're going to remove. But it's going to be a few percent less because it's actually not a full ring, as you can see here. This Conrad from Britpart, we measured that, and it was actually in the lower end of the weight. It had 710 grams total. I think if the original rods already fluctuated 3 grams, that must be within their tolerance range. A performance engine out of the US is going to be within one gram on the rod weight. We're going to be within four grams. Let me show you my setup. There was not a single, oh my God. I clamped the can rod to the top surface with a little C-clamp. Then I clamped it in between wood and over here I have a support. This is not a machinist stream, but if I open this now up, the can rod will actually be flat right here where I want to machine it. It's a carbide cutter. So I hope this is clamped good enough. This is, there we go. To zero. Gonna give it a tenth of a millimeter. There we go. Now we gotta turn this around and do the cut on the other side. Now I got my reference surface picked up, this back into my vise. We wouldn't have this YouTube channel if things wouldn't be like they are. <laughs> I clamped this down here. 
to open this up again. Kiss it. And done. See if it fits. Oh my god. We're gonna give it here a little bit of a scrape. Where's our Toyota scraper? Let's see if this cut was a success. Oh, it better be. So here is the finished machined end of my number four connecting rod. Where's the stupid mark? Here. I think we got by far enough range of motion. So if we go here, this is about the center and we still have ways to go here. And on the other side, we are about here and we got this much to go. So we have enough freedom, but it took again another hour extra. Saturday evening, the shops are still closing soon and we have no groceries left. I'm hungry. So we got another 0 0.050. I would say that's perfect and we can put it permanently together. Oh, we're really lucky again. And 0 0.05 to 0 0.038, somewhere in between. Okay, cylinder number five. Somewhere around 0 0.05, like the others. Oh, forgot to take the picture. Last one. Also very nice. Now you guys check this out. Isn't that beautiful? Last check on a bottom end like this is torque to rotate with pistons installed. Limit is 25 Newton meter, excluding breakaway torque. So we're gonna start with 10. You think 10 is gonna do it? No, my guess is 15. 10's not gonna do it. I'm gonna go 13. Okay. I said 15. I adjusted 13 and it's not clicking. You said 15. Oh, you mean I'm wrong. I'm all wrong. Okay, so we have to I we have won. to start over and I get I, a new guess because now I understand what I you mean. Won. Okay, <laughs> not understanding the rules, you lost. I, I adjusted oh, 14. Shit. You say 13? Yeah. If, if you say 13 and 13 clicks, you lose again. No, I said 12. 12? Yeah. 12 is you not. You want to say the lowest number where it's not going to click. The lowest number where it's and not going to click. already 14. Yeah, I say 12. Oh, no, you had 13 is what you said. Okay, I had, I had already 13. So, so you I'm said 12. 12. Yes, because 10 was too much. Okay. Okay, watch it. Oh, he won. Yeah. So 11. So then 10 was a breakaway torque. 10? Yeah. 10 it clicks. Torque to rotate with all pistons installed. 10 to 11 Newton meters, 25 is the limit. And we have that with a very low clearance on the crankshaft. So that's a very good sign. <laughs> the engine is gonna last forever. Torque to rotate with pistons. All pretty. So now... That's finished. This video is done. We're gonna have to measure the piston protrusion and we can't put that into the beginning of the other video. Oh, we don't? So stop and I'm gonna set up the piston protrusion real quick. I thought we we're gonna go to a party tonight. 
Yes, we will. I just want to check roughly what the piston protrusion is if we have a problem on it. I not. think I need to start drinking now. Okay, then. It's so beautiful, okay? Yes. How can you glue yourself to the road if something like this exists? All right, we're done with this video. The lower end is completely assembled. The next step would be to measure piston protrusion, order the head gaskets, put the heads on and assemble the engine, then drop the engine in the frame, then put the frame underneath the car, lift it up, be done and drive around with a happy Discovery 4. So at this point, we want to thank our patrons a lot for their support and... We'll see you next Sunday. 6.30. Yeah, and we started at 7.30. We are in the final step after the piston install, which is measuring the piston protrusion. And I want to remind everyone what the actual goal is when you assemble an engine like that. And the goal is that it does not end up in a divorce, because it got really close in our case <laughs> now a couple of times. It is important to keep a certain measuring order. And the measuring order is that you finish one piston and then move to the next. Each piston gets measured at two positions, five millimeter in on this side in the horizontal and five millimeter in from this side in the horizontal. You want to measure them at the same time. You do not want to go through and measure one side on all pistons and then turn your gauge around and then measure the other side. That does not work. And the reason that does not work is the piston play, what you see here. You see how excessive that play is on a diesel? Also in this direction, you can see how much wiggle there is on an in-spec piston. Now for all the desktop mechanics who say, now oh, this is way too much. No, it's not. These pistons are expanding with the heat when your engine heats up. So especially the piston crown is undersized when the engine is cold. This is completely normal on an engine like this. So what you want to do on each piston is rotate it one or two times to settle the piston in the direction of rotation. Then you take your gauge and you measure the highest point of your piston and set that on your gauge. Right there, 0 0.62. Now I go on the front side, I turn the gauge around and I take now this reading here and it's 0 0.62. That's now my reading, side A and side B. See what this does when I push that piston over. See how much I can manipulate this reading? And you would get this error if you measure first one side and then go ahead and measure the other side. And Very guess how we found out. <laughs> by almost going through a divorce, okay? Exactly. Was... What's important between your measurement? You gotta verify that your gauge still reads zero. You can see that here. When you have all your measurements completed, take the center point between your two measurements and then take the highest one per bank to calculate the maximum piston protrusion per bank. And that then determines your gasket size. The gaskets have different teeth here. So this is a three tooth gasket. And then the table in the manual shows you your gasket thickness based on your piston protrusion. Yes. What's also important is that your maximum squish variation per bank does not exceed 0 0.1 millimeter. If you have all that done, you know what gasket to choose. And if you're not going through a divorce already by that time, you did everything correctly.